Hello friends, I am Ripunja Bordeloy, Assistant Professor of Natis Institute of Pharmaceutical Science, Department of Pharmaceutics. So today I am here to discuss a very interesting topic that is emulsion. So this topic is quite common to many of you. So here basically I will be giving you an idea about what is emulsion, what are the different types of emulsion, how exactly are the identification tests carried out. So about that we are going to discuss here. So if we look about emulsion, so basically emulsions are considered as biphasic liquid doses from. Now what is biphasic? If we go to the term biphasic, so we can simply tell that biphasic basically means it has two phase. Fine. So if you look at biphasic, biphasic basically means it has two phase. So one phase will be the oil phase and the second phase will be the water phase. So now if you look at emulsion, so emulsions are biphasic liquid doses from which consist of two phase. One phase will be the oil phase and one phase will be the water phase. Again, there are a few terminology like continuous phase and dispersed phase. Now what are these continuous and dispersed? Now let us consider an emulsion. Let us take an example of emulsion. Suppose I have an emulsion which is O by W type. Fine. So here we can consider oil to be the dispersed phase whereas water to be the continuous phase or again we can simply categorize oil to be the internal phase and water to be the external phase. Because here if you look at O by W type of emulsion, so the oil will be dispersed in water as a minute globules. That is why here oil will be the dispersed phase or it will be the internal phase whereas water will be the continuous phase or it will be considered as the external phase. Similarly, if we go for W by O type of emulsion, here water will be the continuous sorry water will be the dispersed phase or internal phase at the same time oil will be the continuous phase or external phase so this is how the emulsions are categorized now now coming to the emulsions so another one important thing is that what are the different identification tests because as already discussed, there are two types of emulsion. One is your O by W type and the second one is your W by O type. So how to identify the types of emulsion? So we have some taste based on which we can categorize what is the nature of the emulsion. Either it is O by W type or W by O type. Now if we look at the types of your identification taste, so the first type is your dilution taste. So the first type is dilution taste and this is the first taste to identify an emulsion. Now suppose what is the meaning of the word dilution? Simply we can say we are diluting something. Here for identification of emulsion we will be diluting it with water. Fine. Now, now let us take an example how basically the dilution taste works. Suppose we have O by W type of emulsion. Fine. So if we look at O by W type of emulsion, the oil will be the internal phase, water will be the external phase. Now here, if we are going to add more amount of water, so there will be no any change because water is already the external phase or we can simply say that if you are going for dilution it with water, so there will be no any sign of cracking in the emulsion because ultimately the external phase consists of water. So more amount of water will cause dilution rather than any changes. Similarly, if we take the same example in case of W by O type of emulsion, here oil will be the external phase. Now if you are going to add more amount of water, so this will lead to your phase separation. So in simple we can 
conclude that in case of dilution test if you are adding water and if there is no any change to the entire emulsion so that emulsion will be your O by W type because water is already the external phase so if you are adding more amount of water there will be simple dilution rather than any sorts of phase separation but at the same time if you are having W by O type of emulsion and if you are going to add more amount of water so what will happen this will lead to your phase separation so in conclusion those emulsion which are stable after diluting it with water so those emulsion will be categorized as O by W type at the same time those emulsion which are not stable or which shows phase separation so those emulsion will be categorized as W by O type so this is about the dilution test apart from dilution test we are having another one identification test for emulsion that is number two dye test so i guess the dilution test is clear to you all now let us see what is dye test or in short we can say it as dye solubility test now to perform the dye test basically we have to use a dye or simply we can say we have to use a color so the name of the dye here is scarlet red so this is very important which which dye basically is used for identification of emulsion so this is a dye and the name of the dye is your scarlet red now the property of this dye is basically that this is mostly an oil soluble dye the second important thing is that scarlet red basically is a oil soluble dye so now what you're going to do next how you're going to identify the types of emulsion so let us take an example how we are going to identify the nature of emulsion suppose we have an o by w type of emulsion now we have to identify it whether the emulsion is o by w or w by o type now whenever we have an emulsion basically what we will do we will add a drop of scarlet red to the emulsion suppose we are adding a drop of scarlet red then we will try to observe the emulsion by placing it in a glass slide under a microscope suppose we have an emulsion we don't know what exactly is the nature of the emulsion so we will mix it with scarlet red that is basically an oil soluble dye and then next we will observe the emulsion by putting it in a glass slide under a microscope now what exactly happens here suppose we have placed a drop of emulsion under a microscope by taking it in a glass slide now whenever we visualize the thing under a microscope we will visualize something like this because we know that emulsion is a biphasic doses form which consists of two different phase one phase will be dispersed as a minute globules in the other now whenever we have mixed scarlet red in the emulsion and now under observing in a microscope if you find that the internal phase they appears colored now this internal phase they will turn to red color so in that case we can conclude that this is a o by w type of emulsion this is a o by w type of emulsion why because see previously i have told you that we have to take a dye and the dye was scarlet red and that basically is a oil soluble dye so whenever you are mixing scarlet red in the emulsion if the minute globules are appearing red color under a microscope that means those minute globules are consisting of oils and they will be mixed properly with the scarlet red and here we can conclude that this is a O by W type of emulsion here oil will be the internal phase or it will be the dispersed phase whereas water will be the continuous phase because here we can see that water doesn't shows any color or the external phase doesn't show any color only the internal minute globules they are showing some type of color or that is the red color of scarlet red so here we can say this is a O by W type of emulsion conversely if we mix conversely if we are going to mix scarlet red in another emulsion and if we observe it under a microscope and if we visualize something like this suppose this is the internal phase and this is the external phase now this is the second picture 
if we mix scarlet red in an emulsion and if we're going to visualize it under a microscope and if you find that the internal phase is clear whereas the external phase is colored so now we can conclude that this is a w by o type of emulsion why because scarlet red is an oil soluble dye and here the emulsion is w by o type for that reason the water phase is clear or the minute droplets will be clear whereas the external phase which is consisting of the oil globules so that will be basically appearing the colored behavior of your scarlet rays so by this technique we can find out what exactly is the nature of emulsion now coming to the third test that is your conductivity test So the first test was dilution test, the second test was disolubility test and now the, now the third test basically is conductivity test. So this test basically is being carried out by following a simple principle that is water is a good conductor of electricity. So this principle is common to everyone that water is a good conductor of electricity. Now based on that mechanism we are going to find out what exactly is the nature of emulsion. Now what exactly is done here? We will take an emulsion and we will try to find out what exactly is the change in conductivity or what exactly is the change in the potential difference fine suppose this is an emulsion we don't know what exactly is the type of emulsion or what exactly is the nature of emulsion we will try to find out the potential difference by using the instrument and basically here if the potential difference is very high we can relate that this type of emulsion is o by w type why because here as it is an o by w type of emulsion so the amount of water will be very high because water is in the external phase now similarly if the amount of potential difference or if the conductivity is quite less as compared to the first case we can consider that this type of emulsion is w by o type because here no doubt it is showing some changes in potential difference but yet the change in potential difference is quite less as compared to the first case because the water content is very high here at the same time the water is water content is quite less as compared to the first one and as we know that water is a good conductor of electricity so here the potential difference will be very high and at the same time here it will have the potential difference but it will be quite less as compared to the first case so this is how the conductivity test is being carried out for the identification of emulsion so these are about the various type of identification test for uh, the emulsion which is prepared by this technique we can e easily find out what exactly is the nature of emulsion this is about emulsion so i guess you have understood what exactly is emulsion how to find out the nature of emulsion so in the next class we will be studying about the techniques how emulsions are being carried out how emulsions are being prepared and what exactly are the advantages and what exactly are the disadvantage of your emulsion so thank you all